So why did your picnic bag take you to the UK? So, um, why did me and my pink bags, my two pink suitcases, um, decide the UK? So I, it never occurred to me that I I should probably go overseas or you know see the world or, um, I think once I started to realize what this qualification can do, like you know the world is yours, I decided mm. okay why not? And I think for the longest time I was scared. I think I've always been lived in lived under the shadow of like pleasing my parents, and you know it was always about like academic achievements. Woo woo, cause see, you know the the star child. And so I I always thought okay I I could never leave them because you know how would they cope? How would they survive without mm-hmm. me? Meanwhile, they they've been okay. Like you know I found them they you know they were together. Yeah. So anyway, I. I started to think, okay, maybe you know you can, and then I, the plan was to go to the UK for six months. Um, so I had two two offers: a six month offer and a, you know this one long term. This one doesn't have a expiry date. Okay. It does. And so I brought it up casually to my dad, like, "Hey, dad, so here's this thing that I, you know, has been like came up as an offer." And my dad was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, go. Who who's stopping you? Us?" He's like, "No." Go. We're staying. We're fixing the country. You go. You see the world. You've done everything. You've shown us the respect. You know how parents are. Blah blah blah. I, essentially, mm. I've ticked the boxes. You know. Um. So they were like, just go. Just go see what's out there. And as soon as I got that blessing from them, I think I knew that I didn't need anyone else's assurance. And because I, mm. like, I literally have nothing. Even to this day, I have nothing to my name. And that's why I always say. I only own, I have two pink suitcases, which had my clothes when I arrived. I had those two pink suitcases and that is all I will ever own. I don't, you know, in, it was like, okay, Kosi, you are, you are in your late twenties. This is the best time to leave because all you have is your two suitcases. You're not, you're not accountable to anyone. You know, no one's going to be like, yo, usile wana, usile. you know, it's just, it's just Kosi. Mm-hmm. If I mess this up, if I get to another country and I mess up, it'll be on me. I haven't ruined mm. someone else's future or I literally am not accountable to anyone. I was like, this is actually the best time to go. Um, and then if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I'll come back and be like, hey, yes, hey, guys, hey, 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 So, I mean, I decided, you know what, Kosi, when, when have you ever done something? Just, just be bold, you know, be bold about it. You will speak to your family. You will, well, I was supposed to visit South Africa in August, but... Yeah, Corona happened, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it you know, happened. exactly. So when my parents released me, I was like, okay, screw it. I'm going to see the world. I'm not holding back. I'm going to be in another country. And I thought, I felt like six months or whatever it's not enough time you know like you're in a new mm. country just when you've settled in you find your perfect store you find you find the things that you like <clears throat> you would have had to leave you know so i decided um in order for me to also here's another very important factor that i forgot to talk about the fact that living in a very like i grew up a very sheltered life Um, And so I I felt like I also needed to define myself outside of the context of the family that I grew up in, like figure out myself for myself. And that takes time. Mm -hmm. And that takes a lot of work. Six months is not enough to come back and be like, wow, I've really done enough inner work. Like I know like my personal development, you know? So I thought, okay, I'm going to put myself in this position. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's going to be scary, but um, I've seen in the past couple of months already, I'm like, okay, I, I, I arrived not necessarily knowing what my journey is going to look like. And I still don't, but I feel like now I'm, I am, I have more of an understanding of myself. I'm more self-aware and <clears throat> I couldn't have done that if I was always going to be at home living with my parents, blah, 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 you know, so something needed to change. And uh, you mentioned that now you are walking more, which is not something that people do in South Africa because we have to drive everywhere. <coughs> um, so, so what are what are like the contrasting differences between home and where you are right now? 
in your life? Sure. There's a lot. When I say there's a lot, there's a lot. Walking. And I realize people really invest in good shoes because your feet are your transport and you need good, comfortable shoes. You know, in South Africa, you, you'd buy a pair of shoes because, you know, you're just going in the car. Even if it wasn't, like, really your size. Like, it was just the size of... Yeah. Um, but you like the shoes, so you wear the shoe. And you, you're in the office. <laughs> no one can see. No one can see under your desk. Good eat that too well. You took off your shoes. <laughs> so it was just like, it's cute. But now, the shoe, the quality of your shoes you wear, it's really important because you walk. When I say we walk everywhere, we walk. And if you're not walking, you're in the train because public transport is so reliable. Um, and you get off the train and you walk to wherever you're going. And people walk fast. Like, even my grandpa, my grandpa, he plays the saxophone. Um, and he, he used to travel a lot. He, was, he, was, he, he is a musician. He's still a musician. He plays in church now. But he used to travel a lot, like France, England. And he'd be like, the Hankos, we are armed. We are, and I want to arm fast. We are the fast now. I was like, yo, that's the, the advice he gave me. He was like, you must walk fast in London. You must know your story. You can't just really, really just, you know, walk. You must walk like you know your story. So people really walk like they, they like own it, like they take like large steps. But like I think that's just the lifestyle of it. Um, um, even like um, just the convenience of everything. Um, if a train and literally the the trains are to the T. Like if if it says eighteen forty three, the train will be there at eighteen forty three. And when the doors shut, the doors shut because the next train is in three minutes or it's in five minutes. The longest you wait is five minutes. It's just such a well-run country. It's so clean, you know, and you really start to wonder, like, where are we getting it wrong, you know, as South Africans? And it's heartbreaking when you get to a well-run country and you're like, yo, if only, you know. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of contrast as well. Like with the lockdown here, they were still selling alcohol. Like people weren't like. It was, you couldn't even tell, is alcohol still being sold or not? Because people just govern themselves, you know? Um, it's not like you have to you give a rule and then still put police on the street to enforce it. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of thing where people know there's a rule, so they'll obey the rule. You don't have to put policemen on the street. Like, it is what it is, you know? And what I like about the UK is that, like, people amongst themselves also keep each other accountable. Like, if someone sees another person littering, they'll be like, excuse me, could you pick that up? You know, a lot of litter. And you're like, oh, you know, like, you don't need police if everybody knows they have that personal responsibility to just do better, you know? So, I mean, I, I sit and I, like, I people watch and I think, okay, like, what's it going to take, you know, for us as South Africans to get into that mindset where we don't necessarily have to always be guarded, you know, like, um, I think about that a lot because I see it all the time. Like I see the contrast in the UK and I'm like. Oh. But from people that I've talked to that have traveled out of the country, you say that um, in European countries, the people are not as friendly as mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. in South Africa. Is that mm -hmm. something you agree with? Yes, fully. Um, because we have Ubuntu. When you get into a taxi, when you get into a train, you greet, right? So when I first got here, and I, I made friends very quickly because of the gym, the UK gym that I'm part of. Um, and I, I asked, because I was like, what is wrong with you guys? Why don't you greet? Like, you know, like you walked in, you found us here. You know that thing, like, um, tolela, um, like you found us here, why don't you greet? So um, this other girl, Emma, explained to me that in the in South Africa, it's considered polite to greet, whereas in the UK, it's considered polite not to greet. So if you walk into the train and you don't greet, you're considered polite. Everybody minds their own business, whereas in South Africa, you have to walk in, you have to say hi, you make small talk, you know. So it was a huge culture shock where literally people keep to themselves. Nobody's going to talk to you. Nobody talks to anybody. And if anything, if you speak, it's like, why are you speaking? Like, you're looking for trouble. If you speak, it's like a bit mm -hmm. shade. It's considered suspect. Like, you know, whereas in South Africa, if you, if you don't speak, it's like, you know, 
Um, um. So it was a huge culture shock. But then you realize it's not because people are being rude. It's just the nature of it. Like we keep to ourselves. But I've seen that like if someone is in trouble or if, if an old lady like trips or whatever, people will still help. You know, they'll come. To, it's not like they mind their own business where they don't help each other. People will still help. But it's more like a, I'm not going to speak unless there's a need to speak. So it's something that I've had to also learn. First, it was strange. Now I also like I walk into the train. I don't greet. I just, you know, I just have to make sure that when I go back to South Africa, I. Yes. You should. <laughs> You pivot. Otherwise, you'll be that girl. Who doesn't care. Yeah, when I've seen since why are overseas? You think you're better. You think you are better. I think, and I don't think like what is friendliness? You know how they say like Europeans are not as friendly. What is friendliness? Is it greeting? Because gre greeting is not a sign of friendliness. Greeting can be a sign of you nosy. You know, you greeting me because you want to know what I'm doing, where am I going. What's my business? But I think that Europeans are friendly. It's just that they don't greet, you know? So they're friendly in other ways. Yes, they won't greet you first, but you can still strike up a conversation with a stranger and find them equally friendly the same way you would back home. You know, it's just that mm. people keep to themselves because they just feel like, okay, I don't want to impose. But the more I, I meet people from the UK, the, the more I feel... I feel like there's the same level of warmth also because I'm finding a lot of people that have the same interests that I do. Um, and like, I mean, fitness, it's a universal language. I knew from, from day one, I, I would need to find a good gym with good vibes because it doesn't matter where we are, where we're from, we all speak the same universal language when it comes to fitness. A squat is a squat, a deadlift is a deadlift, whether I'm in the UK or whether I'm in, I'm in Southie, Biafani, you know, um, so I think um, I think it's 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 people are friendly. It's just the manner in which that we approach them and things like that. But yeah, maybe I'm overthinking the whole thing. I think uh, over the last few days, or rather, can I say weeks? Um, such so, like social issues have come to light, like Black Lives Matter, uh, gender-based violence. Um, what issues? And this is where the issues part comes in. Um, resonate with you in terms of women not necessarily women in sports but women in general in general that is a broad mm. question so just like your most your, one point okay and this is something I feel strongly about as well where I think when it comes to women right we are never held at the same standard um, in the sense that with women on top of, especially like black women, on top of fighting the struggle of being black and, you know, you're a woman. And now here comes things like, especially like in the wellness space where there's like so much conflicting information and it's all centered around like trying to shrink women's bodies and confusing them with all this information regarding, you know, their appearance and, you know, diet culture and how they should be looking in order to... And if anything, you find that <clears throat> women are so preoccupied with issues around self-image and they, their minds don't necessarily shift to bigger issues like saving the world. or You know what I mean? Like we're too busy worrying about like how we look and diets and we're, you know, hungry and all that, whereas we have so much more to focus on. And so I really think even like some of the measurement bases we use, even like who decided that BMI is the best accurate measure of, you know, BMI was, de was designed by like a white male, a mathematician, and he decided, okay, this is people who are healthy. Mm. Based on European standards, not based on African bodies, you know? Mm. And so now you get into this thing where people are like, okay, now I need to fit into this number, where it was never your number to fit into. And mm. so... For me, that's, that's been something that I've always questioned, like, why? Why, are, you know, why do we have to try and fit into certain categories when we can just redefine that whole um, narrative, we'll call it that? Um, and so I think the overarching comment I want to make is that, I mean, Serena Williams, 
will walk into a tennis court and people will comment, oh, she looks like this, she looks like this. Oh, oh she's so angry. Oh, oh, you know? And then some, like a male will also, you know, he'll probably look a certain way or he'll make a comment or he'll say, but you know, so if Serena says something wrong, that's amplified because she's a mm. woman. But if, if another tennis player who's a male says something or acts dramatic or throws his racket in the air and walks off, it's like, yeah, you know, there must have been a valid reason why he did what he did. You know why he did that in your life, but surely can we all be held to the same standard? Mm. Um, and so I really think that when it comes to women, let's take away the superficial stuff and really just focus on like the matter at hand you know um and so it makes it a little bit unfair because you find that um you know women become conscious unnecessarily now it's no more about sport now it's no more about what i can do it's about how i was looking when i was doing the thing that i was meant to be doing it's like mm -hmm. come on come on we have bigger problems like did you see that goal she scored did you did you mm -hmm. no if anything it's like other comments but that's my comment, two cents the comment that you made resonates with the one that you made last time we had this discussion uh regarding women in sports that it's not about their ability but rather the things around mm -hmm. what they are doing mm -hmm. and from the other discussions i've had um it's come to light that the gender the gender pay gap is also quite big in women's sports are there any other issues that you know that resonate with you the gender pay parity where like the male counterpart of the sport is paid He's like paid much higher but i think that's 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 a trend not just in sport but like in general um multiple mm -hmm. studies have shown that women just generally always earn a bit less even though like if you give a woman who who you know is in a bigger household if you give her money she's more likely to know what to do with the money in order to serve the family as a whole than the man um but i think um when it comes to that i think it's just it's it takes multiple generations to solve the problem it's going to take some time and i think it's just a matter of time before we start to see things equalize even in sport even in other areas as well um corporate i mean i i am in corporate i i see it all the time um well i hear of it i haven't personally experienced an instance where pay but also pay they say that there's a reason why the whole thing where it's like don't tell anyone your salary so that people don't talk about their salary so that people don't know that some people earn more than others mm -hmm. you know um and so it became a thing where it's like we don't talk we don't know who's earning what so we we don't know who's earning more even though we have the same qualification and we do the same job so um that's a discussion we need it's like i wish i had another platform to discuss the one about salaries and finances because like stepping into corporate south africa as a 20 something year old i thought that my colleagues or the people that we work with would be more open to sharing not just their salary but like the expenses or you know money decisions that they're going to make like buying a car you know that as maybe people who eat lunch together will discuss it and uh, suggest options and whatnot but i find that a lot of people are still very apprehensive mm. to talk about mm. money you know and yo, know, i think that is it, it damages us because you end up doing things not knowing that there are alternatives out there exactly but that means another page it Maybe does it's a anything. whole topic it's like money is platform. sacred like why can't we talk about money and the fact that, you know, we all desire it and how someone else is, you know, only now you get people that are like starting YouTube channels, opening up conversations about, okay, guys, this is what I'm investing in. This is what, but my, like money is, it's, we always tiptoe around money. Yeah. I, for one, I'm also still very like apprehensive, especially when it comes to money. Like, I just feel like, because my, your, your pay slip will reveal your whole, it reveals your priorities. It reveals your bad habits it just reveals everything and i guess people also don't want the transparency um but hey it's a topic for yeah. another day that's another that's another topic another platform another video another <laughs> <YouTube channel. laughs>
you can put it into your nutrition page and say, these are the, these are the cheap alternatives this is what you can get oh. you know you know to me that uh, people think veganism is expensive but it's actually the it's process actually stuff. cheaper yeah that's what she was saying i also thought that you know going vegan is expensive beans. because Pella, not vegan, beans, beans, but, beans you know potatoes. you want a burger that's the thing it's the it's the fancy schmancy the vegan ice cream the vegan chocolate cake the vegan you know that's what's expensive mm. but like if you think about veganism at its most basic basic element it's literally potatoes beans you know fruits and veg only and how much of those things and now you want to mm. add like you know what do they call them those eggs that aren't really eggs they're vegan eggs or you want to add tofu you want to add what like, vegan egg? there's vegan eggs my bro like i've really? seen vegans. yeah 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 vegans they have everything now they're really Mm, wow those things no there's vegan ice no cream there's vegan cake there's ve there's vegan every yes there's vegan sazi saying tofu. tofu tofu as well that stuff's expensive rather than just angas and angas yeah, i'm a zulu girl my protein source is meat it is chicken <laughs> love a good like chicken breast and i don't even do funny things i just pop it in the grill and then we <laughs> um we're having this discussion because of covid you know yes. so some good has come out of corona we are exploring new ways to live this classically would have been an uh, an interview but i find that people don't read anymore they want to watch videos mm -hmm. so how has your life changed how has corona impacted you yo that's deep that's quite a Uh, existential crisis you basically ask like who am i what am i doing what's your purpose on earth um okay i think more than anything this this has made me realize that the jobs we thought were important are actually not even like you know for me security was okay you're in the corporate world you're set because nothing could possibly go wrong you know that's considered the safer option um whereas other options is like okay a little bit risky but i think we've all learned that nobody is safe even things we considered to be like too big to fail have failed you know and so it's really made me wonder what else am i doing in my space and in my time that's going to ensure that should things go wrong what else are you falling back on you know and it really made me start to that's why you know i started doing my nutrition certificate and started reading up on things that i was already reading up on but then i just thought okay let's just you know do the work um and so i think and i think all of us have done this whether you know consciously or subconsciously but we've all really had to to think to ourselves what matters to me the most um I I know for sure that I probably won't stay in the corporate world for a long time because I realized that um anybody can do what I do. What do you think our new normal is going to be? Um our new normal. Our new this is our new normal. You know how we never realized like how people could work from home? Mm -hmm. We keep we keep talking about the new normal as if it's going to be something different to what's happening right now. That makes sense. This is we're living in the new normal, like it's happening. But like, I mean, lockdown is going to end, right? Yes. Then and what's going to happen? Do you know? And I'm I'm going to be a little bit morbid for now, and I'll get back to the answer. But you know, with me, there's always method in there. Oh. My friend, she's a doctor. She's like the first thing we're going to realize after lockdown. and we're all back on the streets is we're going to realize that there are a lot of people that aren't there anymore you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying mm -hmm. uh, that initial shock of there the certain people that are no longer here that we didn't realize mm -hmm. or you know you sort of took for granted um so obviously we we get over the initial shock and then the new norm i still stick to my standpoint is that we are Oh 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 here's a good one. 
putting on my on the spot but i'm like i'm 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 there i'm there you're actually a pair now you've got yeah. this i think because we know that you know how when you make decisions um or you don't make decisions rather you sort of shy away from making decisions because you're like oh it's too risky i'm too scared i'm not risk i'm not ready so you know those self so sort sort of self imposed um ways of thinking where we slow ourselves down or we talk ourselves mm-hmm. out of doing certain things i think the new normal is going to be you know what screw it i'm going everyone's going to have that thing where they're like screw it i'm going to go ahead and do this you know why because i've seen the worst that could happen i've seen you know and someone says that was the worst that could happen it's happened we've been in a pandemic we've seen literally the world changing and you know what mm. you've lived through that so nothing should be like nothing external should be affected anymore you're like i don't know i don't have enough info well, nobody ever knows nobody ever has enough info whatever it is that needs to be done still mm. needs to be done you know and you'll see that actually even if we have you know if you make it a bit personal i i've started saying to myself you know what nobody is actually even concerned what you're doing and i think that's also like the biggest liberation where you like mm-hmm. you know do whatever it is you want to do because that's not the biggest concern right now um mm. and if you if you're someone that you know wants to create how else are people going to know if you you create if you if you don't create create so we can see that you create and whether or not it sucks is is besides the point you still have to do it either way um and so in conclusion the new normal is that certain excuses that we made um in order to get out of certain things they fall away and now it's going to be a case of but is this really something that you want to do or not do you know um certain things we thought were stable like i said we thought corporate jobs were stable but they're not stable now people are going to have to ask themselves what it is they really want to do with their lives because it's the easy way out mm-hmm. again to go to corporate now you have to ask yourself the difficult questions like what am i good at what do I, what kind of environment do i thrive in what do i really want out of life where do i add the most value where does my purpose lie and so that's why i feel like that's what what's going to happen and and we're going to see a time where people really follow their true calling because they're like you know what um the world could end i've seen the world come close to ending and it honestly doesn't matter i would rather do something i'm loving and passionate about um in that time so yeah in conclusion chase your dreams because you don't know how much time you have on earth I find that I miss I like I miss a lot of South African things that I never used to miss like I'm a keep keep the other day I was craving I'm a keep keep this compass uh-huh. yo I'm still craving I'm still craving I'm a keep keep fam where am I going to find those things in the UK where are you going to find them fam fam chakalaka okay chakalaka I can make but you can't find there's no I'm a keep keep in the UK like That's my thing though. That's uh That's popcorn. Jungle Oats bar. Jungle Oats bar. No Jungle Oats bar. What else do I miss? Bry, bry meat. Oh, I like I'm not going to bry in my backyard. Like I don't have the time or the patience. Hey, uh-huh. Sirwa. Sirwa. Oh my gosh, I need to tell you something because I was just thinking about it this morning. So, you know, remember when you used to paint your nails in university when you, you you were supposed to study and then you had to like find a way for you to sit at your desk, you paint your nails so that you could sit and wait for the nail polish to dry while you study so that you don't get up. I was doing that today and my dad's like, "Sir, I used to do this on painting my nails." Okay. I digress. That was not the point. There's my tea. What's um Oh, no me says that she's still waiting for the UK video. I'm shooting it this weekend. I need to ask waiting for my microphone. Ganti ni no me says. Ganti. I need to say sebenza. Now me has ni sebenza 9 to 5 on weekends we do the side hustle. How? I can you saw my microphone arrived yesterday. Cosy. My last request ne is a message to the woman of South Africa for Women's Month. Sure. What did I answer last time? 
I can't remember. Didn't you say you is good, you is strong, you is amazing, or something like that? Um, um, let me, let me, I, I was listening to a sermon this morning. Um, it said, your anointing is in your authenticity. Um, mm-hmm. And that is my message to the women of South Africa, is that so often we just shy away from parts of ourselves because we think, ah, I'm better off not, you know, living that reality ma'am if there's anything that i want to share is that listen own your sparkle you are you are all that and yeah that's my message i don't remember what i said last time, but i think it was along those lines it was then it was long of course it was long um thank you for joining me tonight and having this discussion and subscribe to my channel that indie runner Thank you for this. I thoroughly, thoroughly always enjoy our conversations. That's why I don't mind jumping into the live, even though we did it again. We're doing it again because you know me. Living in uncertain times. Tell tell your... Mm, jiki, jiki. You know? Okay. Bye. Bye. How do I switch this off?